So we're just here at sunset, just after the Megalithomania Conference 2018. I've got the orange glow of the sun shining on my face here. Uh, here with Robin Heath, Simon Banton, and all about 30 megalithomaniacs. And we've just had an amazing journey around the stones with Robin, with Simon, looking at the different aspects and new discoveries here. And it's just a delight to be inside the circle. And you can join us here again every year at Megalithomania. Every May we come here before or after the conference, just with our group, the whole stone circle to ourselves for a whole hour. So. It's a real privilege to be able to do such things here at Stonehenge. When, when Stone 55 fell, it, it had a great foot on it, which you can see here, a great shoe at the bottom of it, which must have been to keep it balanced. It. And it, when it fell, it was split into pieces and it took the altar stone out, the lintel fell down. Must have been, must have shaken the earth for quite a long way. And then there's another stone around here that's buried, we can't see it, Stone 36 which is the most highly polished um, highly polished stone on the site. It was dug up and cleaned off and photographed. But the most beautiful, it looks like an Egyptian stone, it's so well polished. And that really, it's a shame it's underground. Even though it, that's where it was, I, I would like to see that on the surface and on display. It's the most, one of the most wonderful stones. And everyone who saw it, on, I think it was 1958 it might have been dug up. And it was dug up, cleaned off, photographed, and then re reinterred. Um, so yes, I do think that there were stone end lintels. There's also tongue and groove blue stones over by that there, over by the other side where where the group is now. Should we go and see that one? Yeah. Let's go over this one. So th this blue stone is the tongue tongue and grooved one. There are a few of these on the site. It's, a, it's essentially a square stone, so it's a plank like you'd have in your floor. And if there was a tonged one, you'd slot the two together, implying that there might have been two bolted together to give extra width for some reason. Uh, but it's very hard to imagine you'd make that for fun. It's a very hard mineral um, blue stone. It polishes up beautifully, but it's very hard mineral. So. It's hard to explain why you would make that shape unless you had a matching one that would put, you'd slide with it and put together to make like a stockade fence. Um, and of course it's background tonight is again Stone 56 with the jockey's cap on the top. So you can pan to that. Right up the top, 22 feet off the ground. And the lintels here have got, have got concave mortise holes on both sides. Yeah. Not just here and here, but if you go on the other side, they're more deep. So it implies that on the top of the lintel, which must have been this size, they could have had a, a stru top structure above the lintel, like a roof box. But on the other side, we've got the stones that. Yeah. This space is a much bigger kind of space. Yeah, he draws on. What's this about? Mm -hmm. Yeah? This has got a almost got a pregnant belly in this direction. Yeah? And there's something very strange going on here that no one's really got an explanation for. Th th that is weird, okay, because the, the striations you've got over that side, yeah, yeah and that are exactly what you find at Oyente Tambo in Peru. Well, I never. And you get the exact same striations like this one and the big one laying down over yeah, there yeah. In, uh, as one quarry in Egypt. So Form follows function. It's clearly. bizarre. Yeah. It's bizarre. This thing's also got another weird weirdy on it, but the light is very poor. So I'm going to have to show you a photograph. Close to the equinox at sunrise. This is taken from over there looking this way. I did not colour that in. Is it? Yeah. See it again? Oh. See this? Yeah. Oh, it's like a, no, it's like a shepherd's crook. Mm -hmm. Let me look All at kinds of let me get out of right? That is like a shepherd's crook. I couldn't see it. So behind me here is one of the most interesting stones at Stonehenge. We can see the striations all over there. This is extremely similar to what I've seen at Oyente Tambo in Peru, uh, Machu Picchu in Peru, and many other sites. Also, as one quarry, I've seen this, this style of, of kind of scraping. It's almost like the stone has been softened 
and um, I find this intriguing. There's a much bigger stone with striations in the main circle. But just around here, check this out as well, if we're looking at more Peruvian style. Just on the edge here, can you see this? This is like, if I sort of put the angle down, you can see it better there. That is like a protrusion that's coming out the side of this particular stone. Again, this is a style we find in Peru and in Egypt and some other places around the world. So what's that doing there? I've never noticed this before. So thanks Simon Banton for pointing that out. And also down here, there's actually some shaping on the stone. You can see that all around here and it comes over here and I'll show you a better photo of that when the, when the equinox sun lights it all up and it looks like a shepherd's crook which is what we find in Brittany, in Karnak, uh, also in the Evera area of Portugal suggesting this stone is almost like a representation sort of honouring the different cultures who may have been involved in building them so is there a Peruvian connection with Stonehenge now? This, this, just this protrusion alone and this style of kind of carving and shaping the stone could be evidence of that. But let's go and look at another one. There's a much bigger one, which I've got several photos of at different times of year, when it's been raining, when it's been sunny, just to get different views, different angles on it. Now the sun's set now, so we don't, can't, won't get the best shots, but check this out. This is the other one I wanted to show you, it's much larger scale. But again, we have these striations, I'll, I'll just show you some other photos, so you can get an example of that. And it gives you, you know, to me, this is evidence of either common influence, um, or there's extreme travelling going on in prehistory between places like Stonehenge, places like Peru, Egypt, and other parts of the world this could just these little things we find little clues little signatures could be the key to understanding the global megalithic network that stonehenge was a part of